Hey there, music makers. Zach here from the Dynamic Music Room. And today we're going to talk about the Alto Recorder, which is my favorite type of recorder. And I think it's even better than the Soprano Recorder. So let's talk about how to play it and get going. First, we need to compare, like, what is the Alto Recorder exactly? Like, what, what is it? You know what I mean? So um, a lot of times my kids will see recorders all the time going into school and stuff like that. But then I will pull out my Alto Recorder and they'll be like, whoa, why is your recorder so big, man? I don't know my recorder, why my students are shaggy, but, you know, apparently they are. So anyway, so they see this and I, it's a great discussion on pitch and how pitch works because the Alto Recorder is designed exactly like the Soprano Recorder, except it's obviously it's bigger. Here, if I back up, you can get it into the frame, see the comparison. So the Soprano Recorder is what most kids play when they play in schools. It's got, you know, it's, we call this, it's a C instrument because when you do its bass note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is low C. So if this is low C, it's a C based instrument. The alto recorder is just a little bit longer. And when you do the exact same fingerings, it's now a low F. All right. So the fingers work the exact same way. If you play hot cross buns on like you would on soprano recorder, it still sounds like hot cross buns, only instead of B A G, it is now. E, D, C. Let's demonstrate that a bit. See? It's a fourth lower. Is it a fourth? This would be G down to C. That's a fifth lower. Oh my gosh. It's almost like I have a master's degree in music or something. Lame. They sound really cool when you play them at the same time. fifths. You gotta love it. And it's much the same as playing a soprano recorder. It has a lot of the same things. In fact, they were designed that way so that anyone could pick up and switch anyone and they know what to play. The reason we don't usually start on alto recorders in school is because they're more expensive. They cost usually like five-ish times more depending on the brand you get than a soprano recorder. The fingers are a little bit further spread apart. So if you're starting, especially in third grade, you might have a hard time getting them to stretch their fingers out. The soprano recorder has closer finger holes, tone holes. And so they sound, um, so they're easier to reach and that kind of thing. But the alto recorder, it just says that little bit of a lower pitch, it has a little bit of a mellower tone. Usually it really helps with the sound and it also better fits the key in which the, the, the kids sing. Um, so that's why I usually like to play alto recorder when I'm just playing for the kids. But when I teach, I teach this until they get older and their fingers can reach. And then some of them, if they want to switch to this, they can. Parts of the alto recorder. <clears throat> the parts of the alto recorder are actually the exact same as on the soprano recorder. I'm not going to get into details on that because I've done a video on parts of the recorder, which will pop up in the eye, wherever the eye pops up. So if you want to see that, go check that one out after this video is done. All right. So playing alto recorder, same as soprano recorder. We want soft air. I always tell my students, start by making a small circle with your lips. Well, that kind of looks weird. Anyway, circle with your lips and we're going to whisper a light T2 sound. We're going to whisper it. I leaned toward my microphone, so I made sure you could hear it. I'm going to put that circle on the mouthpiece, not putting my teeth on it or not biting the recorder. If you're hungry, go get food somewhere else. We're going to play the recorder. So you make that small circle with your lips and you whisper with that soft T. And that's how you play. They are much less likely to squeak, which is really cool, as long as you cover the holes, which is a slightly more difficult with this. Uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's black. There's that is. Um, the holes are a little bit bigger. So you really have to make sure you aim for that middle part of your finger. All right. So uh, let's just get a little started on alto recorder. We're going to start on the note E, which is the same as B on soprano. Thumb on the back. Pointer on top, left hand on top, of course. Put your left hands on top. Okay, that was weird. It's almost like 
music teachers say that all the time. So you should probably put your left hand on top. Anyway, thumb on the back, pointer on the top pole. This is the note E, or on soprano recorder would be the note B. It sounds like this. Sounds nice. Now I'm going to put my next finger down. So I have thumb on the back, covering it up all the way, one and two. This note is D. Nice. Nice. Now I'm going to put my third finger down. Thumb one, two, three. This is note C on alto recorder. And if I put it together, I can play hot cross buns going E, D, C, one, two, three, stay here. C, 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 D, 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 E, D, C. Same finger patterns as on the soprano, but now it's on the alto. Uh, here's what it sounds like. Nice. See, it's got a pretty nice sound. I like the alto a lot. It's pretty cool. So I guess this would be like your first alto lesson. This is the first thing I would do on alto. Most of the time you won't get to alto unless you played soprano first. But for those of you who are playing alto before you play the soprano, which is perfectly fine, especially if you're an older person, like an adult, not old like me. I'm so old, guys. So old. Then that's probably where you want to start too. You can... Take any soprano recorder book and use it to play alto songs. You just do the same fingering. So if you already know the fingerings for a soprano recorder or if you're following the book, you can use the same fingerings. But just keep in mind that down the road, you're going to have to switch how the notes work in your head because you're going to look at the soprano recorder book and go B, A, G. But on the alto, it's E, D, C, and it changes like that. Other than that, the alto functions exactly the same, like I've said a bazillion times in this video. I hope this helps you with um, alto recorder. I'll get this out of my face. Although maybe you like it better in my face. I'm not sure. It depends on who you ask. So the alto recorder is really cool. It's a great way to play a slightly lower sound and get a more mellow sound, maybe more pleasing to the ear. Although really nice soprano recorders do sound nice too. But still, it's just I'm a tuba player by trade, and so I always like those low pitches. So the alto recorder is really awesome. It's my go-to when I'm teaching kids in school, and it's just it's a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, did you hear that? A lot of fun. A bird just flew into my window. Probably not going to edit that out either. The alto recorder is also really helpful when you're doing part work kinds of things. Like I did this really kind of silly video on this uh, Christmas stamp parody thing. Whereas like a stamp that had have yourself a merry little Christmas, but it was absolutely the wrong music. And I did this four split screen where I played the different parts on my soprano and alto recorder. So it created this really cool like change in timbre and it, it actually kind of sounded pretty cool, although not at all like a Christmas song. So check that out uh, at the eye or wherever that card pops up uh, to see that kind of thing. Now, if you like stuff like this, you want to don't want to miss out on anything. You got to hit that subscribe button because I, I mentioned this in the previous video, but I am working on this like crazy, crazy song that I arranged for Recorder Trio. And it's it's probably not going to come out like anytime soon, probably in another month that might come out. But I've got to practice the parts because they are super hard. I mean, I've got like. I mean, I've got that part down pretty well, but there's like accidentals, B flats, C sharps. It's probably the hardest song I've ever played on recorder. And so I hope when it comes out, you're around to see it, but you won't be unless you subscribe and hit that notification bell and all that jazz. All right. Until next time, keep on playing recorder.